Testing, one, two, testing, one, two. Hello all and welcome back. Today we're going to be playing some Dwarf Fortress. Now I'm sure at least some of you have heard of this game. It's a uh, lax in graphics what it has in complexity. So what I'm going to be doing for at least the first episode and some episodes from here on out uh, I'm going to be teaching you how to play the game. So, uh, you'll notice that you can't do anything with your mouse, as you can probably tell. The way that you navigate through this, this game is by using a keyboard. You cannot use a mouse. So, to get through the menus, you use the arrow keys and enter. And the first thing you're going to want to do is hit start playing. And then it'll pull up this, which is just a, oh wait, hang on, that is not what you want to do. You want to hit create new world, sorry about that. And then this will happen, and it's just generating right now, or get unpacking all the files. And then I'll give this saying that's still in beta, or not beta, alpha I think. And yeah, it doesn't matter, it's still getting updates. And for the purpose of not having to wait 30 years for the world size, I'm going to go to smaller with a very short history and leave everything else the same. Now if you're starting out completely brand new, I would suggest going with a super high mineral occurrence. But uh, for right now, I'm just going to do sparse. And then this is going to generate the world for you. And this is what the game actually looks like you're looking at the full texture of the game and this might be baffling to you but once you pick up the game you'll understand what all of this means like these ends those are hills or these smaller ends which are plains or these deserts or this which is all tainted land you know stuff like that you can look over here this is what year it is in this world right now and this will give you the number of history figures, how many died, and how many events have happened between these history figures and dying. So the lore behind this is random. You'll get a different lore every game, but lore kinda isn't really all that important. And uh, just like normal arrow keys to move this little cursor around, which will tell you up here what uh, what kind of biome you're hovering over and you can't really do anything at this point but you're gonna want to hit accept and then it'll synchronize and save your folder and then you'll hit start playing and I already have two other worlds that you have seen but didn't know what they were now I'm gonna do region 5 and here you get some options you get legends which is kind of like a lore viewer for the world Dwarf Fortress, which is the actual game, and then Adventure. This, if you remember the original AC or ASCII Rogue, that's what this is, but for Dwarf Fortress. So if you feel like going back to a classic roguelike adventure game, the adventure mode would be for you. But I'll do one of those later on. Today, we're playing Dwarf Fortress. You hit enter, and it'll process all the data. Nothing important here. Okay. Now we are in the embark location menu, I should say. And this will give you the world view, what region you're in. And this, they're identical for smaller maps. Once you get ones that are huge, the region and world make a lot more sense. Um, and then you have local, which tells you what the place that you're going to embark to actually looks like and what it has is located on the right side over here now uh, as of right now I believe we are in a forest by some mountains next to a river next to another city and I can't tell exactly what that city is but this isn't a really bad setup but all it has is some soil and flex stone so you want to have soil and flex stone, but for right now, we need some more things than just that. So what you're going to want to do is hit F 
and it'll bring up a little menu on the right. And this is where you can input all of the things that you want. For a starting player, I would suggest deep metals, yes. Shallow metals, yes. Soil, um, doesn't doesn't really matter how much. Just a little. Clay, yes. Flex stone layer, yes. Savagery, low. Evil, low. Actually, I think if you set it to NA, it just doesn't doesn't do it. Temperature doesn't really matter. Rain doesn't really matter. I mean, it does later on, but you will want a river. You do not want aquifers. And once all you get that set up, you hit enter to do the search. And all this that is red that just popped up was things that don't match uh, your specifications. And now you will hit ex uh, ex exit, escape to view. And all the blinking ones that you can see here, 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 and here are things that have either all or part of the specifications that you have set. Like, for instance, this one right here has no trees. <laughs> it's untamed, but it has everything that we want. Except a river. Oh no, it does have a river, which you can see by the little blue line here. Let's uh, let's look around. Still no trees. That's not a good thing. You need trees. Let me see if I can move around a little bit. Find some trees. Okay, no. Can't find any trees. So let's go see this bottom left one. Still no trees. Oh, hang on. What do I lose here? Shallow metals? It still has sand and clay. And the thing that you need sand and clay for is uh, mostly healthcare stuff. Like, if your guy gets a fractured arm, then you can make a cast out of clay. And eventually it'll heal. Uh. Hmm. I think this might be our best spot course I can look around for other things but for right now it has everything we need so once you're with done with that going to hit E to embark and it'll bring up this menu now unless you're using a starter pack you won't see any of this you'll see play now and prepare for the journey carefully which is what we're gonna do because I don't like using these presets and this gives me a way to explain how to actually set up your uh, dwarves. So you start out with seven dwarves. Ironic, I know. And they all have ten skill points. Now those skill points can be allocated into different skills, which this is only about half the list of things that you can actually do. Just to give you an idea of how complicated this game is. And uh, down here right here way at the bottom you can see how many points you have now each skill costs a certain amount of points at the beginner level I believe it's five and then it's six and then I think it just progresses yeah it goes five six seven eight nine so on and so on until Grandmaster which you can't get starting out but you can playing the game now, uh, we only started with 70 points, which is not a lot. That's very few points. So our our Dwarven Kingdom that we're coming from is very poor. <laughs> which is what you get for having a... Uh, what's the word? Uh, in early history. Um, so the things that you need, you need a miner, you need a woodcutter, a carpenter, a mason. I like to have a smith, but you don't entirely need one at the beginning. I also like to have an engineer, but you don't need one in the beginning. You need a farmer, a hunter, or a fisherman. And then you need someone with good combat skills that can train your hag uh, <laughs> ragtag militia when things come to attack you. 
Now if you hit tab, you'll go into your items menu. And this is the thing, these are the things that your dwarves will bring with them. And most of this stuff you really don't need. Like for instance, all these wood buckets, that's, let's see here, 30, 60, 90, 140. That's 140 points of material that you can spend on something more important. So, what you're going to do is scroll down using the arrow keys, and you're going to hit minus to delete that object. And now you look, if you look down at the points, I have 210. That's a lot more to work with, so hit tab to go back to dwarves. And let's start out with this guy, Rakust. Rakust. He's going to be our miner. So you may notice that you can't hit the plus button to add things. At least on my keyboard, you can't in most keyboards that I have played on. If you hold shift plus, it should add. Otherwise, there's something wrong with the game. And I can't help you there. Next, we're going to have our woodcutter. And since we're so low on points, I might actually take a couple out later on and mix these guys up a bit. And this guy's going to be double. He's going to be our carpenter and our mason. And do. Hang on. I'm going to take two levels off this and give him engraver and build designer as well and then I'm gonna make my weaponsmith just a couple points in weaponsmith, boyer, armorsmith, metalsmith furnace operator, wood burner and that should be all you need for that guy you could also make him a crafter which will help in buying materials from caravans that come through because uh, they tend to be pretty expensive stuff. Um, I'm going to make a fisherman. But I'm also going to make him my mechanic. And the reason I'm doing that is so that he can have something to do in his off time when he's not doing mechanic stuff. Now, in this game, your dwarves can get bored. I should say they get become unsatisfied with the amount of work that they're not doing. And uh, they tend to get mad and kill people if it happens for a long enough time period. And then I'm going to make my... Uh, crap, hang on. I'm out of points. Let's see here. What do we not need? Don't need two battle axes. Okay. I'm going to make my uh, farmer, who's also going to be our cook. Yeah. Let's make him an awesome grower. Just for the heck of it. And then I'm going to get a doctor. That's one guy that I forgot to mention. Doctors will be useful in the long run. But in the beginning, you should not have anyone sustaining major injuries. Because if you do, things can get, they're just going to go bad for you, and you should probably just leave the game at that point. Um, hmm. I'll give the doctor something to do on his spare time as well. So he's also going to be my military drillman. I'm going to give him axemen, since we already have axes, it's a little bit cheaper. Or what you could do is give him swordsmen and make wooden swords later on to practice with, which is actually what I'm going to do. And I'll give him a point in fighter. Is that going to work? I'd like to give him shield user and armor user as well. I don't know if I can afford that at this time yeah um, for the record do not play this game with an early history because I've never I've never ran out of points so early before um, I'm gonna give him these two right there and wow uh, 
Did I give this guy siege? I did. I did. I'm gonna give him a little bit better siege operator. Okay, and I'll tab. I also don't think that you need a, s a serious variety of seeds, so I'd suggest sticking with two uh, types of seeds. And my two favorite are plump helmets and dimple cups, because you can use them throughout the entire year, and you don't need to worry about it not being the year or the time for that specific seed. Let's see, is there anything else? A steel anvil? No. Let me see if I can get an iron one. They're about 200 cheaper. <laughs> uh, hopefully I can. Wow, all we have is steel. I guess that is a good thing. That means a lot. there is a lot of steel in this world. I don't need three quivers, so I'm going to drop that down to two. And I'm also going to get rid of most of this cloth stuff so that I can do this. You're going to want to get a female dog and a male dog. And the same with a female cat and a male cat. Because animals in this game reproduce a lot. And then I'm also going to want to get... There are no chicken. Oh, yes, sir. I have passed them. You're gonna want to get a rooster. Only one, because if you get two, the uh, <laughs> they'll fight for dominance and end up killing each other. Then you're gonna want to get a couple of hens, maybe six to eight, and that leaves me with 18 points. Is there anything I want to start out with? If you hit N to go to the new, which means that you can input an item to uh, bring with you. Or hammers, huh? Can't even... Actually, I can, can't I? Yes, I can. I can bring a training sword. A single training sword. Or I can bring some leather. That'd be a better idea. No. No, it wouldn't. <sighs> Give me a minute. I gotta check what time this is. Okay. All right. Um. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I can bring some copper. Uh. Jeez, I would hate to waste this. So what I'm gonna do instead is go back to my dwarves and upgrade some of their skills. Uh, this guy will be fine. He doesn't need anything special. You would like to have some bonuses on your... Oh, can you not go up another level? Why not? Oh, he's out of points. Okay. Because the, uh, the more... The higher level they are, the better they are doing their job. Like, the reason I'm giving this guy such a high siege operator is so he'll be better at shooting moving targets with siege weapons. And the reason I'm giving this guy higher growing skills is that he can maintain more plants. So and so. Um. Hmm. What was this guy doing? Okay, I'm gonna make him our crossbow dwarf. And he can shoot at stuff once we get crossbows. Okay. I am going to end the episode by saying hit E to embark. Give you an idea of what this game actually looks like. And I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. I'm going to read you this little intro text before we leave. You have arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond. Your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all... And this is the, the dwarven city's name that I came from. Asmolurvard. I think I said that right. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance. 
whether by volt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves who are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you. But it is spring now, enough time to dwell, uh, to delve secure lodgings ere the leopards get hungry. A new chapter of dwarven history begins here at this place. Edmonton, key shocked, strike the earth. Okay, and I'm gonna let this load. <laughs> and this is the game. Alright, so next episode I'll go into what you're looking at here. How to do some basic operations. And, um, get you mining and doing some cool things. Such as building workshops and giving out commands. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Um, uh, already said that. Peace off.